This is an educational video on the epidural anesthesia fluency for the Rosalind Franklin University Nurse Anesthesia Program by doctoral project candidates Vansa and Samantha for the class of 2021. The fluency is broken up into three sections, pre-procedure, procedure, and post-procedure. After obtaining informed consent, we will gather our supplies by going through our mismates. Make sure that a full machine check has been done and that you have a self-inflating Ambu bag. Make sure there is working suction and oxygen. Monitors including EKG, pulse ox, blood pressure, and oxygen with end tidal. Emergency airway equipment, good IV access with adequate prehydration, any drugs you will need for the procedure and emergency drugs, specials including PPE, clean gloves, the right size sterile gloves, a cap, a mask, and eye protection. For the procedure, you will need a chlorhexidine swab, epidural kit, tegaderm, and tape. There are different types of loss of resistance syringes. All glass syringes are said to have the best tactile feeling, but you have to be careful with the plunger. This glass syringe has a lure lock connection at the hub, so it can securely attach to the epidural needle. This plastic pulsator syringe has less tactile feel than a glass syringe, but the plunger won't slip out. If your preferred syringe is not in your epidural kit, make sure you have one to drop into the sterile field. There are also different types of epidural needles. The three needles have different angles of entry into the dura. With a 30 degree angle of entry, the TUI needle has the smallest incidence of postural puncture headache. The Husted has a 15 degree angle of entry into the dura. And the Crawford has a zero degree angle of entry into the dura. If your preferred needle is not in your epidural kit, Make sure you have one to drop into the sterile field. Position the patient properly by asking them to arch their back like the letter C or an angry cat. Use the landmark of the patient's iliac crest to find two fears line at L4. Use your hands to find the patient's spinous processes for midline and choose an interspace in between two aligned spinous processes. If you are having difficulties, you can always have the patient sit straight up and reposition themselves. Or if landmarks are difficult to palpate, the use of ultrasound may be helpful. After performing a timeout and washing your hands, it is time to clean the patient's back with chloroprep. Warn the patient that it will be cold and start at the insertion site, going in concentric circles. It is important for the chloroprep to dry for at least three minutes to prevent neurotoxicity, and while it is drying, we can prepare our tray. This tray can be opened with clean gloves, making sure not to contaminate any of the sterile areas. After donning sterile gloves, we will prepare our tray and medications. Because we used chloroprep, the betadine is not needed. There are two sterile drapes, one opaque and one clear the sterile barrier, and pre-made and blank labels for labeling syringes. Not every kit comes with the medications that you will need. This kit does come with saline for the loss of resistance technique and a test dose. The epidural catheter, labels for the epidural catheter, a filter and alligator clip, which I will remove the caps from now. We will now prepare our syringes and medications. Be sure to have any medications you want in your epidural available on the field or have someone there to assist you in sterilely drawing up the medications. We are going to be using a filter straw and 3ml syringe to draw up the 1% lidocaine that will be used for our skin wheel. Take care when opening the glass ampules not to cut yourself or leave sharps exposed. Always verify the dose of the medications and expiration date prior to drawing them up. Draw up 3 mLs of the 1% lidocaine. Remove all of the air from the syringe. 
Then remove the filter straw and exchange it for a 25 gauge needle. Uncap the 25 gauge needle. We are now going to use our glass loss of resistance syringe. Remember to be careful when handling it because the plunger can slip out. Now attach the filter straw to the 5 ml glass loss of resistance syringe. We will be using saline for our loss of resistance technique. It is acceptable to use either 2 ml of air, 2 ml of saline, or a combination of both while performing your loss of resistance technique. Draw up 2 ml of saline. Remove the filter straw from the loss of resistance syringe and carefully set it down on your tray. Now attach the filter straw to your 20 ml syringe. We will now draw up our test dose. The test dose is 5 ml of 1.5% lidocaine with 1 in 200,000 epinephrine. Draw up all 5 ml of your test dose into the 20 ml syringe. Remove the filter straw from the 20 ml syringe and attach the yellow and clear filter. Prime the filter to ensure there are no air bubbles left. I like to arrange my tray in order of what I use with what I use first, furthest from the patient, and what I use last closest to the patient. Carefully remove the epidural catheter from its plastic and slide the pink plastic adapter to the end of the catheter. Set the catheter on your tray. The last thing to get ready is your epidural needle. Uncap and inspect your epidural needle. The epidural needle is 9 centimeters long and has striated markings to help you keep track of how many centimeters are in the patient's back. It is counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 centimeters. Set the epidural needle back down. You have now prepared the epidural tray. We will review our medications and syringes one more time. The 20 ml syringe has your test dose and has a filter on it. The loss of resistance syringe has saline and the 3 ml syringe has 1% lidocaine. We will begin the procedure by placing the sterile drape. Warn the patient that it is going to be cold and sticky. Be sure not to contaminate the drape while removing the backing to the adhesive strip and securing the drape to the patient's back so that your target inner space is in the middle of the opening. Remind the patient to get into the correct position. Grab your 3ml syringe with the 1% lidocaine and find your target interspace. Warn the patient it will sting and burn. Raise a skin wheel and inject lidocaine through the needle's path. You may use it as a finder needle to locate any os in your projected path. Slowly insert the epidural needle until it is firmly seated. This is usually about 3 centimeters. The epidural needle will pass through the skin, adipose tissue, supraspinous, and intraspinous ligaments, and we use the loss of resistance technique to determine when we've gone through the ligamentum flavum. Secure the needle and remove the stylet before grabbing your loss of resistance syringe. Securely fasten the syringe to the epidural needle and gently pulsate the plunger, moving the epidural needle millimeter by millimeter into the patient's back until a loss of resistance in the syringe is felt. Make note of how many centimeters of the needle are in the patient's back. Because there are 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeters outside of the patient's back, I know it took 5 centimeters to get to the patient's epidural space. The epidural catheter also is marked by centimeters 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is a long marking. You'll be at the tip of the epidural catheter then 13, 14, 15 has triple marks. 16, 17, and 20 has four marks. Four to six centimeters of the epidural catheter should remain in the epidural space. Less than four centimeters and the catheter could slip out. 
but if more than six centimeters of catheter are inserted through the epidural space, the catheter has a higher chance of migrating to one side of the epidural space or into an epidural vein or fat deposit. We will insert the adapter and epidural catheter 16 centimeters through the epidural needle into the epidural space. After we withdraw the epidural needle, this should leave our catheter marking near the patient's back at 10. This should leave five centimeters of catheter in the patient's epidural space. Carefully withdraw the needle over the epidural catheter, ensuring that you're not removing the catheter with the needle. Never reinsert the needle over the catheter as it could shear the catheter. Secure the catheter once the tip of the epidural needle is out and slowly loop the needle and catheter back to your hand to ensure you don't contaminate the catheter. We will verify the catheter placement by counting back from 12 to 11 to 10. Now attach your alligator clip by sliding the catheter through the hole and snapping down the yellow piece until it clicks. Grab your 20 ml syringe with the test dose and filter. After a negative aspiration, slowly inject your test dose of 1.5% lidocaine and 1 in 200,000 epinephrine. The 1.5% lidocaine is 15 milligrams per milliliter, so there are 45 milligrams in a 3 milliliter test dose. The 1 in 200,000 epinephrine is 5 micrograms per milliliter or 15 micrograms in a 3 ml test dose. The test dose will see if your catheter is in one of three places. If the catheter is in the epidural space, nothing will happen. If it's in the intrathecal space, the patient will get lower extremity numbness and weakness. And if it's in the vasculature, you'll see tachycardia from the epinephrine. Secure the catheter in a sterile and secure fashion. We don't want it to move. Use a tegaderm so that the depth of the catheter can easily be assessed. Some institutions have special devices to help secure the catheter to the patient's back, while others just use tape. Appropriately dispose of all equipment and sharps. Be ready to verbalize your plan for hemodynamic changes, including IV fluid, ephedrine, glycopyrrolate, and phenylephrine. Document the procedure appropriately in the EMAR. Assess the spinal level bilaterally with a broken tongue depressor, a glove of ice, blunt tip needle, alcohol swabs, or cold hands. Congratulations, you did it. That was a basic epidural catheter insertion. We would like to thank the Roslyn Franklin University faculty and staff our fellow SRNAs, clinical preceptors and facilities, and our supportive friends and family. Thank you.